within our grasp. But just to the extent that we're able to innovate. So whereas we've had a system that has served us over the years, but that system also has produced an incremental or a piecemeal growth model. The rest of the world is taking giant strides. So incremental or piecemeal or marginal growth model is no longer able to serve our people. That's why we're now talking about disruptive innovation. So you need to begin to think about how do I creatively generate wealth, create employment? How do I ensure that I have enough money to be able to cater for all the developmental challenges within my local government? What you've done here today is that undertaking that you're going to need people's focused government. The people would be at the centerpiece of your governance model. You have to nurture a sense of inclusion and you have to banish feelings of alienation. So you are not going to say, I would only cater for people who have voted for me. You have to think about, now you are the chairman of everybody. You are the leader and the head of government in that local government. So everybody looks up to you. And don't forget, as we say in Inubu, we're only as good as our weakest link. So that means that we need to make sure that we have everybody on board. We have to think about, first of all, to guarantee and ensure that we have peace and security in our various local governments. We have zero tolerance for crime in Enugu State. Because if you're thinking about, and I'm sure a lot of you are already thinking about how to attract cottage industries to your various local government, they would come if you don't have the peace and security. And just as we did, barely an hour after being sworn in 15 months ago, the first executive order that I signed was the Citizens' Charter. It was a charter that speaks to how we can provide transparent, accountable governance, how we can engage the people in the governance process, how we can be held to account the way we spend the people's money and how we engage them to be able to give them our scorecard and get feedback from them and look at ways we can improve on the things we're doing. So this is what I'm charging you and I'm rousing you all of this money to know that we have to connect with what is happening at the state level. And to make it very effective, we need to cascade it to the grassroots. It needs to get to the very core. Our belief in Enugu State is that nobody, no child, no family, should be left behind. We're all 
very important. And we need to create platform for our children to be able to express the best fashion of themselves. That we're already doing through the Smart Green School program, which I hope would act as a platform to anchor a lot of your development. Because those smart schools, we need access roads to them. We need to be able to ensure that they act as a point of feeding the cottage industries that we hopefully we're able to attract. Another area to look at is of course the provision of basic amenities. We're already working with you to ensure that we have built across all the electoral wards in our state type two primary health care centers. The interesting thing about the primary health care centers, it also comes with the staff quarters. Because the major challenge we have with our primary health care centers is largely understaffed and we also do not find the health care personnel when we are sick. So our objective is to make sure that we have healthcare personnel 24-7. So just recently, we approved the recruitment of over 2,000 healthcare personnel, which include the community healthcare extension workers, the nurses, the midwives, and of course, the doctors as well. Things like water in the 21st century, we really shouldn't have any community that does not have access to portable water. And so it will be our duty to ensure that every community, indeed every home, is not more than five minute walk from portable water access. So we should think about a number of other basic amenities, rural electrification. We shouldn't have a community without power. And we should also be thinking about other renewable energy. We have challenges across all the sectors. Your job as leaders would not be to dwell so much on those challenges. It's to be thinking outside the box on how to solve them. But you cannot do that remotely. You can't do that operating from the city. You have to be there with your people. So the era where we have local government or their deputies leading their people remotely or by proxy is gone. We would have no tolerance for local government chairmen who do not govern or rule from their local government. The people have to know that you are there. You have to go through the pains with them. You have to share it with them. You have to work with them to develop strategies, to develop solutions that would solve the problem. That's all they want to hear. How and when these problems will be solved. Not that they are there. So while I again uh, congratulate you all for these uh, well-deserved history and of course victory and your, your swearing in this morning. I want us to know that we've also undertaken a huge bud burden, which hopefully we want to look back a few years from now and be very proud 
of the various roles we played. And we're not going to be proud because we heralded or we want to be heralded as change makers. But because we did what we did because it was the right thing to do. So on that note, I want to congratulate you all once again, and I wish you well. Thank you.